this will be our first of the essential Feldenkrais lessons for happy hips. And it will be our basic pelvic clock. Many of you who've studied Feldenkrais, have done Feldenkrais lessons before, already know that lesson. But I will invite you to take a fresh new look into your experience because you will have a chance to actually feel what's happening while you're moving your pelvis in the hip joint. So often we do the pelvic clock movements in kind of monotonous and, and way without paying attention. And we miss that. We miss how much improvement we could have by perfecting our hip joint. First of all, you're lying on your back. If you're comfortable, legs are long. Pay attention where your hip joints are. Pay attention. Can you form it in your mind? The image of your two hips, your right hip, the left hip, the ball, of the femur sitting in the cup as a tabulum? Can you feel how close to the midline the two hips are? Observe your pelvis. Notice where your pelvis is on the floor, relatively to the floor. Would you say one buttock is pressing harder than the other? Is your pelvis turned a little bit? For many of us, we will start with the pelvis rotated. Now, if your pelvis is rotated, can you feel which hip joint is turned in then and which hip joint is turned out? Remember the last movement that we practiced, feet were planted and pelvis was rotating right and left. That required white, one hip joint to go into internal rotation and the other to external rotation. We may never thought of it that the twist of the pelvis will, will put one of the hip joint in the internal rotation and one on the external. Most of us are familiar with one foot maybe more turned out, right? That's the expression of internal and external rotation. Watch as you're lying. Does one foot feel more open? If you extended a line from the right heel to the, let's say, third toe and beyond, where is the foot pointing? Is it pointing to the ceiling? Is it pointing out to the side? And what about the other foot? Are they symmetrical? Or would you say one is more open? And go ahead and interlace your fingers, lift your, put them behind your head, lift your head and take a look at your feet. Look at your feet and see if they match what you felt. Are they mirror image? Are they about the same opening? Or does it feel like one foot is at 45 degree and another at 60 degree or one foot feel more open? Now go back to feeling, what about your pelvis? So, so this is obvious. If the foot is more open on the right side, therefore it's likely that your right hip joint is externally rotated. It's likely, but it's not mandatory because you might have something that's called retroversion or antiversion that will cause your foot to be more turned out without really turning your hip joint. That it's not the hip joint that is turned. It could be the architecture of your bones that decides why one foot pigeon toes or both feet pigeon toe or why you walk Charlie Chaplin like. It could be not because of hip joint motion, but the structure within your femur now back to position of your pelvis. Notice right and left buttocks, how they're resting. 
is one side little bit flatter. Then pay attention to your lower back. How is your lumbar spine? Would you say it's arched? Is it arched more on the right or left side? Or is it fairly symmetrical? And then notice your ribs and shoulders, how they are resting. And please bend both of your knees. Bend your knees and stand your feet about shoulder width apart or hip width apart. Now you know where hips are. So putting hips width apart, you know what it means. But find a position where the legs can pretty much support themselves. If you need to stand a little wider, stand a little wider. If you need to stand closer together, stand closer together, but use the feeling as a guide, feeling where the legs just support themselves. And now begin to make a movement with your nose, with your nose of a circle. Imagine a circle in front of your nose and the 12 o'clock is upward and three o'clock is to the right and six o'clock is downward and nine o'clock is to the left and start to make a circle with your nose. So you're lying on your back and feel to make it the back of the head is rolling around different parts of the back of the head touch at different times. Continue with this and make it a little faster without rushing, but a little simpler. Your nose is making clockwise circular movement and feel there are times where chin comes away from the chest, times when your nose and chin turn right, time when the chin is closer to the chest and then to the left and up again. And allow your shoulders, your back to be simple. Feel how far down your skeleton this movement transfers to. Is it just your neck? Change direction. Move in the opposite direction. Down to the left and then to the right and up and then left and down counterclockwise. Feel the sensation of this movement on the opposite side. And feel the back of your head is rolling in a circular way, which means that on the back of your skull, you're moving a little bit upward, then toward the left side of the skull, then to downward, the weight bearing is closer to your neck. Then you pass it to the right side. And as the chin comes up again, the weight bearing shifts toward the top portion of the back of your head and feel if you were lying on the semi-dry paint, your hair in the back will be painted in a circle. And make it smaller but quicker, just a small counterclockwise circle with your nose. Whoop, 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 whoop. Simple, 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 simple. Feel how you can let go of your chest, Shoulders, doesn't have to be big. Wonderful, stop this movement and do the same with your pelvis. Make a movement with your pelvis around the circle. 12 o'clock is toward the top of your pelvis where your lower back starts. Six o'clock is you toward your tailbone. Three o'clock is on the right, right side and nine o'clock is on the left side. The same clock as you had for the face and very gently begin to make a movement clockwise. Your knees are bent now. Your knees and hips are bent and begin to make a movement with your pelvis around the clock. Don't make it big. 
the improvement is not proportional to the size of movement you make. If anything, it might be reversal proportion. The bigger movements you make, the less you will improve. The smaller and clearer, and please don't rub your spine and rub your pelvis. It's not like a smearing movement. It's not like you were spreading paint or peanut butter under your pelvis. It's more of the circular rolling. There's no rubbing between your buttocks and the floor. It is a circular transition from point to point to point. At every point in time, different point of the back of the pelvis is touching the floor. Go counterclockwise, which means flatten the lower back and then start moving to the left and downward toward tailbone and then to the right and then upward. Continue gently, simply. And watch what's happening with your head, with your nose, as you're making movements of the pelvis. Change direction. Now make it a little smaller, not fast. It's not about being abrupt. Look, when you're walking, would you like to walk abruptly and every step jarring and huge movements? Or would you rather do it with a flow, with a grace? Do the same thing here. Move gracefully, not powerfully. Good. Stretch out your legs and rest a moment. And pay attention to what's different in the sensation of your two legs, in the sensation how your buttocks, pelvis, lower back, and ribs touch the floor. Many of you will notice an increase in contact with the floor. Now please bend both of your knees again. Do two circles at the same time in the same direction, your nose and your pelvis, your head and your pelvis, and start clockwise. Tilt your chin up, your nose goes up, pubic bone goes up, and then start both of them move to the right and downward, to the left and upward. Small and gentle movement, circular movement, where your nose and your pubic bone are making the same movements. Pubic bone tilts up, nose tilts up. They go to the right, they go downward both, they go to the left. The back of your head is creating a circle on the back there, and back of your pelvis is creating the same circle. Gently continue with the movement and feel, where do you need to let go to allow this movement? Because this movement is quite spontaneous. When the body is relaxed, soft, when it's not opposing itself, the moment you start moving pelvis, your head will move. It's almost unavoidable. The, the moment you move the head, the pelvis will join in. However, when we have some tension all along our spine and rib cage and the hip joints, those connections may be gone. And then you move your pelvis, but the head isn't moving, or you're moving the head and neck is straining, but, but the chest is still or pelvis is still change direction and move both of them in the counterclockwise. Make it small, make it small. So it's upward, nose comes up, pubic bone comes up, you're touching, flattening the lower back and you go to the left and you go downward and your back arches, lower back arches a tiny bit. 
chin comes to the chest and then you go to the right. Wonderful. Stop, stretch out your legs and rest. Watch your contact with the floor, length of your two legs, openness of your hips. Observe breathing. Notice the way you're inhaling and exhaling. All right, please bend your knees again. Let's do the same movement, both with your pelvis and your head. But this time, pay attention to what's happening in your right hip joint. How do you do this basic movement? How do you do the pelvic clock, clockwise movement in your right hip joint? What's happening? Are you flexing? Are you extending? Are you internally rotating or externally rotating? And when? This is interesting. Bend both of your knees. Knees are bent, normal bent position. And go on with the pelvis in the circular clockwise direction with your observation of the right hip. What's doing in the right hip as you making circle? Both knees are bent. And feel it. Can you see? It's not so clear. What are we doing in our hip joint? when at any time, four o'clock, five o'clock, et cetera, six o'clock, when we go to the left side, we, when we go to flatten the back, when we go to the right side, what's happening at every moment? The clearer we make it, the more, the smoother, the easier it will become. Oh, what about now the left hip joint? Continue the same movement, but think of your left hip joint. What's happening as you continue with a clockwise circle in your pelvis and in, in, your, in your head? The head and pelvis are making counterclockwise uh, movements, feeling, sensing your left hip joint. Good, let's simplify it. Let's go straight up and down, 12 and six, 12 and six. Don't make a circle, but just flatten your back and arch your back a little bit. Your nose will move down and move up, move down and move up. We're not making circle now. Make a plain movement of tilting the pelvis back and forward. back and forward. When you tilt your pelvis back, your lower back flattens. When you tilt your pelvis forward, your lower back arches a little bit. At the same time, your head, look what happens. When your back arches, the chin gets pulled to chest. When your back flattens, your chin is pushed away from the chest. So again, here too, the pelvis and head are making the same movements. They both tilt back. They both tilt forward. Continue with this movement and feel what's happening in the right hip joint. Feel your right hip joint is flexing, meaning bending. And the hip joint is then extending. At which point you go into flexion and at which point you go into extension. Feel this is the example where we move pelvis relatively to our thigh. We're cl quite clear when we move the thigh in relation to the pelvis, but we get less clear when we're moving pelvis relatively to the thigh. Good, stop this movement a moment 
and now bring your knee to chest a little bit and away from the chest, but just a barely, just barely, just a small, similar amount of movement to what's happening when you're tilting your pelvis. Feel this is the same movement. Here and there. Lift it a little bit and lower it. Stop, go back to rocking your pelvis and feel now your pelvis moves relatively to your more or less stationary thigh. When you're arching the back, hip flexes. When you flatten your back, hip moves into extension. Do it on the left side and see, can this be as clear on the left side? Move your pelvis a little bit forward and back toward 12 and 6 o'clock. And watch, what's your sensation of the hip joint here? Is it as clear or is it a little muddy? Muddy waters there that we don't really feel as clear or movement may be a little sticky. Good. Stop a moment, stretch out your leg and rest. For those of you who are tired of lying on the back, you can roll to your side for a moment. You can get off of your back. Remember, we are practicing to take care of ourselves. We shouldn't be doing anything that strains us or makes our tired, fatigued. Then return to lying on your back. Let's go with the movement of the pelvis from three to nine. Just across, right to left, which is rotations. Remember when you were standing and I asked you to either pivot your foot, Charlie Chaplin or pigeon towing in, in towing, out towing, in towing, out towing. Then we turn the pelvis left and right relatively to planted feet. Move now right and left your pelvis. When you go to the right, it's three o'clock. When you go to the left, it's nine o'clock. We're not making circles anymore. We're just going across from left to right. And do not lift your whole pelvis. It's not a bridging exercise. Think of your pelvis is like a wheel that turns a little bit left and a little right or as if you roll the ball. There is no spinning, there is no smearing, there is no, uh, your pelvis brushing the carpet. It rolls like a ball, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Feel what's doing in the hip joint. Could you tell your right hip joint, what happens when you turn your pelvis left and when you turn the pelvis right? Which of the cardinal movements of the right hip joint is utilized when you're rolling pelvis right and when you're rolling the pelvis left. Feel your knees are standing. We're not, we're not tilting. It's not about tilting the legs right and left. Also, it's not about holding them rigid. If they move a little bit, it's okay. No problem. But it's not about rigidity. But it's also not about keeping the hip joints fused and just tilting legs right and left, moving the pelvis the same amount. Continue. When is your hip joint rotating? Where is your hip joint moving inward or outward? Now continue the same gentle rocking of the pelvis left and right, focusing on your left hip joint. Feel what, what produces this movement? What do you do to make your pelvis roll right and left? Some of you will discover if I push off the foot, I'll move away. So if I want to roll left, I push with my right foot. And then I stop, pelvis returns. Then I push with my left foot and the pelvis can roll to the right. Can you feel it? That we can push off 
we could use this kind of movement to roll our pelvis. Let's give it a moment of rest. Stretch out your legs, rest a moment. And this applies at any time you feel tired. You don't have to wait for official breaks. You can stop at any point and give yourself a break. Sometimes just 10 seconds, 20 seconds, that's enough. And then you go back to the movement. Notice the quality of your contact with the floor. Please bend your knees. Put your feet, hips width apart, or shoulders width apart, or the way that they can support your legs, your knees. Place your right hand on the inner thigh. Right hand on the right inner thigh, on the inside, inside of the thigh. There are muscles that move, that are connecting your pubic bone with the inner thigh, with your femur. These are called adductors, ADD, adductors. Now, begin to move your pelvis right and left and feel when they're contracting and when they're asked to get longer. Roll the pelvis gently right and left and observe when these muscles contract and when these muscles have to let go. When you're turning your pelvis to three o'clock position, meaning to the right, your pubic bone is moving to the right. And therefore, it's possible that your right hip adductors could contract to pull your pelvis to the right. Place your hand now, both hands on the pubic bone, on your pubic bone. And continue moving, rolling your pelvis a little bit right and left and feel how your pubic bone moves to the right and to the left. One time it can be pulled by your right hip adductors and next time by your left hip adductors. And what you don't want is to say yes and no at the same time, to contract the right hip adductors while you're trying to go left, because this is as if you were trying to turn right while trying to turn left at the same time. This is never a good idea to do two opposing things at the same time. Unless you're trying to make yourself into a brick, isometrically contracted brick. And sometimes isometric is good. You contract right and left at the same time, you become like a wall. But walls typically don't move that well. Now place your hands on the left thigh, inner thigh, and feel workings of the muscles of the left thigh the inner thigh as you're rolling your pelvis a little bit left and a little bit right. Feel, this is another interesting example. Go ahead and stop the movement and move the left knee out and in. Like a frog leg, a little bit out and in. This is obvious. When we move the thigh, nothing to it. Your hip abducts or moves outward and then moves back to upright very clearly. In other words, your knee moves away from the pubic bone and then toward the pubic bone. Or your femur, your thigh bone, moves away from the pubic bone, backs toward the pubic bone, away and back. There is also a little bit amount of rotation here. As your frog leg drops to the left, you externally rotate, you're outward, you're Charlie Chaplin a little bit, the leg. When you bring the leg back to standing, you're moving a little bit from Charlie Chaplin back to in-towing. Maybe not completely in-towing because that would mean to bring the knee across the midline. Good, now stop. Keep your thigh motionless and move your pelvis right and left and feel, can you sense internal and external rotation in your left hip joint, but not that your thigh is moving, but it's your pelvis moving back and forth. Wonderful, 
and then stop, stretch out your legs. Again, perhaps change position for a moment, lie on your other side or on your stomach, or if you're happy on your back, you can remain on your back, not, not a problem. We spend most of our life and we create habits, habits of movements, habits of holding ourselves. You can be standing, for example, with your pelvis always twisted in one direction or always tilted forward or always with the buttocks flattened and, and tucked back. We could have the pelvis in any of those clock positions. And it's not only during when you're doing lying some strange pelvic clock movements, but while you're walking, while you're standing, while you're skiing, while you're doing sports, while you're dancing, there is always a relationship between your pelvis, two hip joints, and the rest of your body. What we'll be exploring in these next five sessions will be how to improve those relationships how to go beyond just habits. Now lie on your back again. Stand your feet in a way that they can support themselves and go back to the movement of the nose, head and your pelvis in the same direction, clockwise movements. Both your nose, your head and your pelvis are going in the same direction to the right first, downward, to the left, and then upward. Continue moving, make it smaller. The Olympics of the Feldenkrais method is the gold medalists are doing the smallest movements and they still can feel precisely. They could write with their pelvis. They could do tiny micro writing with the pelvis moving it so precisely that it will create letters. It's not some big twists. Gentle movement clockwise with your head and pelvis. And while you continue, watch how each of your hip joints is permitting, at which points it gets a little fuzzy and maybe it disturbs the movement and the movement gets a little jumpy or a little sticky. And those moments is where we normally resolve to pushing harder. When you have an imperfection within let's say hip joint and the movement is less smooth, you start to push, you start to force, you start to speed up the movement, you start to get impatient. In, emotionally it's never pleasant it's always when we catch ourselves that something is not smooth we are not moving as well as we wish it feels not nice and we have tendency to either harden up and push through that discomfort or we get annoyed angry we rush away from the experience or we get so bored that we fall asleep it's just like ah oh, there's nothing to me no interest whatsoever Feel if you could keep your attention. And when you discover that something is not so simple, don't fight it. Don't try to fix it. Just continue very gentle movement, your head and your pelvis. Change direction, go counterclockwise. Head goes up, pelvis tilts back, go to the left. Then both head and pelvis go down, chin comes to the chest and then to the right and then upward again, gentle, simple. Lovely, stop for a moment and straighten your left leg, straighten your left leg, your right knee remains bent. And go on with a clockwise movement of your head and pelvis, and feel which hours of your clock got worse, more difficult, more challenging, and which hours of your clock actually are quite simple. Continue with the clockwise movement of your head and pelvis while the right knee is bent. Smaller is better. Feel 
which areas got a little bit harder to do? Which areas became simpler? Good, compare that to the other side. Bend your left knee, straighten your right leg. Go counterclockwise with your head and pelvis. Go up and to the left and down and to the right. Continue with the movement and feel what's happening on this side. Is it still the same hours that are difficult or it moved to a different place? Be gentle, be gentle. Change to clockwise movement with the same left leg bent and the right leg straight. And listen to the experience, to your experience. When you have your left knee bent, does it automatically shift your weight in the pelvis to a certain direction, to certain hours that you don't have to do anything and its pelvis already is tending to move there? Good. Stop, switch legs again, bend your right knee, straighten your left one. And go with clockwise direction first, two circles. And then counterclockwise, two circles. Your left leg is straight. Wonderful. Bend your left knee too. Both of your knees are bent and go back to clockwise movements of the head and the pelvis and see if it's a little better. Don't be fast. Don't rush. Don't be fast. Don't be greedy. Don't try to improve immediately. Allow yourself just as we did when we were babies, to fail so many times. And we kept failing and we kept not getting what we wanted to do. We wanted to roll and you were not able. And it took you weeks, weeks, weeks until you rolled once and then you couldn't do it again. Try to be okay with a process where things maybe are not perfect, but don't force. Excellent. Stretch out your legs and rest a moment, please. Notice your pelvis, contact of your pelvis with the floor. Notice the sensation of your hip joints, the right socket, the left socket, the right ball of the femur, the left ball of the femur. Are you clearer? Do you know where your hips are a little bit better? We cannot improve if you don't know where they are, what they do, how they move, what they feel like. You cannot improve. Please bend both of your knees. Stand them so they can support themselves fairly well. And then cross your right knee over the left. You may need to adjust the stance of your left leg for this situation. Cross the right thigh over the left. I just told you before, first assignment, first don't, don't cross your legs or at least don't do it too much. Well, you will have an opportunity to learn why. Why is it so important to not cross the legs or not to be habitual slave of certain crossing? Go on with the circles of the pelvis. Start with clockwise movement with the head and pelvis and feel in this situation, which hours get a little bit challenging, a little sticky, and which hours of your clock are actually quite fine, no problem. Breathe with that and observe, having the right thigh crossed over the left, you fixing your hip joint. You're not increasing freedom between your pelvis and your thighs. 
having one leg attached to the other creates a certain unit, fixation. Can you feel it? Change direction of the clocks. Still the same foot, still the same foot, but go in the opposite direction. And listen to this. Counterclockwise, up and to the left and down and to the right. And feel how free is your pelvis when the legs are tied, tied up. Uncross them and continue one circle clockwise, one circle clock counterclockwise and feel, is there a difference? Is there a difference in your control over your pelvis, over your back, over your hip joints? Wonderful, switch crossing, cross left thigh over the right. And begin counterclockwise circles of the head and your pelvis, this time with the left thigh crossed over. Feel which hours of your clock feel simpler and which hours of the clock got a little bit sticky. Would you say your overall feeling of freedom and effort is better than with the legs apart? Or do you feel that having the legs cross may feel comfortable, may feel comfortable habitually, may even feel comfortable emotionally because when we cross legs, we go into a little bit of protective way of crossing legs. We don't expose ourselves, we hide just as when we cross arms, as we fold into ourselves. And sometimes it's wonderful when we don't feel so hot, when we don't feel so confident, nothing wrong to do whatever is needed to give ourselves a sense of, of hugging ourselves, of hiding. No problem. That emotion will pass and then you will regain your confidence and you'll be fine. So there is no movement that is wrong. But if we do something over and over and we have no other choices, then it's the problem. Change direction. Experience which hours are easier now, which hours are more difficult. Beautiful. And then uncross your legs. And before you rest, do two movements one way and two movements the other way with legs apart. And feel what is the sensation of freedom in your hip joints. Feel movement of the head and pelvis, both moving in the same direction, supporting each other. Excellent. Stop it, stretch out your legs and rest. Feel the sensation of how much space you have in each of your hip joints, your right and left hip joint. Do you feel like there is a little bit more spaciousness there? A little bit more freedom? Now, please make circles with both feet, with your toes. A small, the arms are down along the sides and legs are long, legs are long. And you make circle as if you were painting with both feet, with your toes clockwise, up toward your head to the right, downward to the left and upward again. And pay attention as you make this movement, can you start to feel that your pelvis is doing something and your head is doing something? And in fact, as your body gets less tense, less contracted, you find that movement from any end, from head, from toe, will flow through the whole system. Now, bend your knees just tiny little bit so your heels are on the floor and continue with the movement of toes and movement of the pelvis and movement of the head 
all in the same direction. Toes go up, chin goes up, pelvis tilts back, toes go right, you go to three o'clock with the head and pelvis, then you go to six o'clock, then you go to the left, and you continue. Both feet, pelvis, and the head. Simple, simple. Change direction. Wonderful. And then stop, stretch out your legs and rest. And one more time, bend both of your knees, stand them so the legs can support, practically stand by themselves. If you're comfortable with both arms above your head, go ahead, put both of your arms over your head on the floor. The elbows can be straight, somewhat straight, slightly bent, whatever is comfortable. If your shoulders don't permit it, you need to put the arms a little bit wider or maybe put them on the pillow or something. And go back to the movement of the pelvis and the head in the clockwise direction and watch what's happening here. Which hours of your clock get a little restricted when the arms are above your head? Change direction to go in the opposite, slowly and gently. Do it that you have all the time in the world to feel it, to experience. Don't worry if you're not sure. You, you, you listen to my question, which hours, and you feel like, I'm not sure. I, we would like to get that information. This is not important. What's important is your direction of your attention. You're like a baby that is attending to herself, to himself or themselves, attending to the experience, your own experience, and forming out of that focus, out of that attention, precision comes. It's not external that I'll tell you that this movement should limit this and therefore you will put it in your head that that's what should happen for you to maintain attention and slowly these things start to show up rest a moment put your hands down along the sides i was listening to a podcast recently and a person who wrote a book called your inner fish about um evolution he said his experience his early experience where he was going to a desert and trying to spot where the bones of dinosaurs and some treasures are and he said that he partnered up with people who would just go to the desert and spot right away everything like over here on to the left a mile from here i bet there is something i can see it and he would just watch and all he sees is orange rocks and nothing. And then it took some time before he could watch the same thing and start to spot, oh, that little glitter, that little indentation in the ground, that means something. It became meaningful. I also recall when I was once working with uh, surgeons, on, on their postures and body mechanics during the awkward surgeries. And I recall uh, talking to a person, they were all showing on the video, on the picture, the insides of the person. To me, it all looked like red goo. I couldn't see anything. And the surgeon who was next to me was like, oh, look at these tonsils and look at this and look at this structure. And all I see is they're just a goo, like red goo. And he told me that his experience during residency was the same thing, that he would look at the picture under the scope and couldn't detect the thing. 
But after years of polishing it, improving, then you, you start to, from that chaos comes patterns and clarity. The same thing is for us here. One last movement, interlace your fingers, bend your knees, lift your head, keep your head up in the air and be, continue with the movements of the pelvis. Two or three circles in clockwise direction, hold with your hands so you're not straining your neck. Your abdominals now are, now are contracted. Can you feel they're busy holding your head up? Which hours of the clock get fuzzy? difficult, which hours are quite okay, no matter if you keep your head up or if the head lies down. Maybe you sense it, maybe you can spot it, or maybe you're confused, you're not certain, and this is okay, perfectly fine. Leave it alone. Stretch out your legs. One more time, pay attention where your hip joints are. Pay attention to your pelvis, to your spine. And before you get up, do one more movement. Bend both of your knees, one movement clockwise with your head and pelvis, one movement counterclockwise. When you don't have restrictions, of crossed leg, of the arms above the head, or head lifting, or just one leg being bent. Feel how free your whole body can be in motion in one direction and in the opposite direction. Please roll to your side, come up to sitting. Sit a moment. Take a breath, get yourself in anti-gravity position. Some of you may feel a little lightheaded, a little dizzy. So give yourself a moment to get used to uprightness. And whenever you're ready, come up onto your feet to standing. And pay attention in standing what your standing is like. How tall you are. Sense where you are in relation to your feet, to your heels, where you are in relation to your pelvis, where your pelvis is in space. Can you feel your pelvis being in, the, in its known home position? Of course, from there you can move right and left and forward and back, and it can circle and it can turn and can twist, but feel where it is it right now. and walk a little bit. Beautiful. That's the end of the lesson.